see. Let me get a, a more interesting planet first. This is just kind of a bare planet. So here's my planet. Um, and like Andrew said, there's, it's all generated from a height map, uh, which gives you a normal map, and then that gives you a map that controls what terrain or which detail textures are being used. Um, and that's the final texture map. So that's the final planet. Um, I'd like to show you a little bit about how I actually make a planet. Let me clear this all off. So the most basic way we have of making planets is to just put down, you know, a single stamp. It gives me a lot of control, but it's really tedious to make a whole planet like this. And since we have four billion to go, it's going to take a while. So it's really much more efficient for me to put down a a single tool that makes a whole bunch of different stamps that are varied in orientation and, and uh, position. And you can see I can put down a whole bunch of these and they're all slightly different. So I get a lot of coverage and I get a lot of variability pretty cheap. I can also make things that uh, dig into the height map to make oceans. I can have stuff that uh, both digs into the terrain and it builds up on the terrain, so I can have these nifty craters that have oceans in the middle. If I want more control, um, I can have the brushes actually move along splines, so I can have these long, continuous rivers. And I can even make brushes that take the base height map as a conditional, and so I can have these brushes that layer onto each other and then kind of do a little inversion thing and you get these weird rippling effects. And as Andrew mentioned, this is all being done in Swarm, which is our particle system. So I have really good control over the paths that the particles are taking. So for example, this is a system where the particles only make 120 degree turns. So you get these cool hexagonal patterns. Um, all that means that I can make a lot of really cool brushes and really cool effects for the planets that um, there's some that are terrestrial and there are some that are a little stranger, things that you would never actually see on Earth, but it's really fun to encounter a planet that has this stuff. So here's my steampunk planet. Here's my baseball planet. And then I've got an organic planet as well. So I can get all sorts of really wacky effects with this. Okay, so now I'd like to show you actually some of my favorite finished planets. When I've put down a whole bunch of tools and decided that I like the planet that 